I'm Heather, and this is the Living with Addiction podcast, where I show you how you have more power than you realize when it comes to helping yourself and your child that's struggling with addiction. Hey, how's everybody doing? I hope you've been having a great week, but if you haven't, I'm sending you lots of love and reminding you to have a ton of compassion for yourself and give yourself a lot of grace because you're going through something incredibly difficult dealing with a child's addiction and it is difficult enough without you adding to it by judging yourself harshly and expecting yourself to feel different because if you're listening to this, that means that you're trying. So give yourself a ton of grace and love and compassion. And I just want to share a quick story with you before I get started on today's topic. I got to FaceTime with my daughter the other day, and it was just such an amazing experience. And if you don't listen all the time, I'll just share quickly that she is four months sober and she just finished rehab. Um, She was there for 90 days and now she is living in sober living. And getting to see her on FaceTime because I haven't seen her in a couple of months. So I haven't seen her since she was in rehab. Um, She was in the, the end part of it where she was able to come out and spend the day with me. And she looked great then, of course, you know, once our kids get into rehab, they start changing pretty quickly, but she was just glowing. She'd been at the beach with a friend and that just warms my heart (laughs) that she's out doing stuff like that. And her happiness was like radiating from the inside out. And it was just so touching to see that. Like, as soon as I saw her, I started crying. It was just this immediate reaction, like fully physical of seeing that happiness that I've been hearing in her voice. And this didn't seem possible the day before she went to rehab or even the day she went to rehab. Like, my mom and I dropped her off and got the heck out of there because we were afraid she wouldn't even stay. Like days before she was saying things like it wasn't worth it to go and that rehab doesn't work because it didn't work the last time. And in the past when she went to rehab, she was never willing to live in sober living and now she loves it and is happy and thriving in that environment. So we just have to be really careful not to categorize our kids as somebody who will never go to rehab or never go to sober living or never do this or that, because we have to remember that sometimes the situation seems, I can only imagine, even much more hopeless for them than it does for us. And so they say things like that, and maybe they mean it in that moment, because it feels like it will never get better for them the same way. It feels like it will never get better for us. But things can change at any time and we never really know what will happen. And that's something I find very comforting that I never really know what will happen with my daughter. That reminds me that all of the terrible things I think about all of the time aren't going to come true, that I never really know how things will play out. I've thought before that I knew exactly what a person or situation in her life was going to cause. And thank God I was wrong 99% of the time. So I just wanted to share that with you just to remind you that when we're in the middle of something, it feels like it will never change. It will never get better. And it will always be this awful. And that's just not true. It doesn't have to be that way which is a great lead into my topic today, because this is something that I'm kind of fascinated with. It's called post-traumatic growth. And that is about the good that can come out of trauma. And I'm not trying to dismiss the suffering of somebody with PTSD. This can come as a result of PTSD, But someone in the middle of PTSD is a totally different topic. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about once you have 
done all of the work on your trauma and you're in a place where you're ready to come out the other side of it. So I'm focusing on the growth that you can experience after a traumatic event. Like, did you even know that that was a thing? I've heard of it before, but I never really studied it until I was preparing for this podcast episode. And I'm just so fascinated by it because I can see like, this is exactly the things that have happened in my life. And, you know, on one hand, as humans, we're kind of fragile, right? Like we can easily be hurt physically and emotionally or killed. But on the other hand, our ability to heal physically and emotional is astounding. Like sometimes I'm absolutely blown away by the changes that people make in a 12 week period of working with me. I feel completely honored just to get to see that. It's amazing to me, the changes that people can make because our minds are so powerful. And when we harness them in the right direction, we can create whatever we want. And if you've been dealing with a kid's addiction for any length of time, then you've probably experienced some traumas including the extended relentless stress and pressure and chaos caused by the addiction. And of course, this is something that we would never, ever choose for ourselves, but we're in the middle of that. Or maybe you're listening to this for some other reason and you've experienced some other trauma. But every experience includes the good and the bad. There's a dark and a light side to everything. And Post-traumatic growth is the positive changes that are experienced after a major life crisis or traumatic event. And it occurs in five areas. That's how it's measured. And one is new opportunities that that emerged from the struggle. Two is changes in relationships, such as closeness with other people who have suffered the same trauma is like the reason I have my Facebook group or a new closeness with friends and family. The third one is an increased sense of one's strength and resilience. Like now you know you can get through anything if you've made it through this. The fourth is greater appreciation of life in general. And the fifth is significant changes in spirituality, religion, or your belief system. Now, I certainly wasn't looking for growth when I found it. What I was looking for was relief. And that relief came through tremendous growth and change. And the same growth and change that came from all the work that I share with you on this podcast and the work that I go deeper into with my clients is what created post-traumatic growth for me. And I want to add that I wasn't ready for growth when I was still in great distress. And I had to get past that part to be ready for growth and change. So if you're listening to this and you're in a state of distress or in the middle of a crisis, you might not be ready for the growth part yet. And if that's the case, Like, don't judge yourself. Allow yourself to be right where you are. Just be open to the idea that at some point you might be ready for that too. So there's a distinction, a distinction between post-traumatic growth and resilience. We hear a lot about building resilience to help us with our kids' addiction, and it's such a valuable skill. It's the ability to recover quickly from difficult situations. Post-traumatic growth, however, is when somebody experiences a traumatic event that rocks them to their core and challenges their beliefs. They endure psychological struggle or even mental illness like post-traumatic post-traumatic stress disorder, and then ultimately they find personal growth growth. I can't say anything today. (laughs) The process takes a lot of time, energy, and effort, of course. So somebody who is resilient when trauma occurs won't experience post-traumatic growth 
because they aren't rocked to the core and they don't have to seek a new belief system. That's not to say that they won't experience growth at all. They just won't experience the true definition of post-traumatic growth. And thinking about myself, when my daughter's addiction started, I didn't have the skill of resilience. So there was a lot of trauma and struggle for me. But through post-traumatic growth, I built the skill of resilience. So when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I didn't experience the level of trauma that I experienced with my daughter's addiction. I've experienced, you know, fear and anger and deep grief, but I have the skill set to work through these things as they come up for me. I work through them very quickly. And before all of this happened with my daughter's addiction, I was completely powerless when it came to feelings. I've shared that before that feelings were like my kryptonite. I just wanted to be numb. I didn't know what to do with them. I just wanted to avoid them. And now I'm like, hey, I might cry all day today. <laughs> you know, I hope anybody around me <laughs> is ready to deal with it because I'm just going to cry whenever I need to. And I trust myself to do that now. Like, I know that it won't kill me. I know that I won't get stuck there. I'm okay with it. That it's just grieving and I'm safe to do that. And it's going to open me up to processing how I feel about everything so I can file it away. But if I experienced breast cancer 10 years ago, it would have been a completely different experience. I would have been traumatized by it. It would have been the catalyst that pushed me into post-traumatic growth instead of my daughter's addiction. So there's a few traits that contribute to post-traumatic growth. Uh, one of them is being open-minded, so just being open-minded to all the possibilities of what can change, what you can learn, how you can grow from this traumatic experience. Being an extrovert, which I think is kind of funny because a lot of times people say to me that they think that I'm an extrovert and I'm totally an introvert. I just have to force myself into extrovert territory to do this work. Uh, another trait is being a female and also those in late adolescence to early childhood. So people outside of those um, traits can experience post-traumatic growth as well. It's just that those are the people who are most likely. So you don't have to possess all of those. Maybe you're just open-minded and that's going to push you into all of the other ones. And there's, um, psychologists use five areas that I talked about earlier to evaluate whether somebody has post-traumatic growth or not, or whether they've experienced it. They talk through those five areas. And again, that's new opportunities that emerge from the struggle changes in your relationship, an increased sense of your strength and resilience, greater appreciation for life in general, and a significant change in spirituality, religion, or your belief system. And my daughter's addiction definitely shook me to the core and caused me to question my belief system. One of the things I always share with you guys is that you need to question your current belief system and create a new belief system that serves you as you go through your child's addiction. And that was critical for me in my experience. And I experienced change in all five of those areas. I went through the whole thing. And what's interesting is that what kept me stuck for a long time was my resistance to changing. I kept wanting my life to just go back to the way it was before. And we have a real tendency to do that. Even if we don't necessarily like the way things were before, we are hardwired not to like change and to stay the same. And that's why we resist it so much and why we cause ourselves so much pain trying not to change. 
I wanted the pre-trauma life. So I kept trying to force my daughter into the role of who she was before, thinking that that would fix it. But things did not get better in my life until I stopped resisting reality and I started creating a new normal. And as I was researching post-traumatic growth, I was reading that life can be better than it was before the trauma, which is pretty mind-blowing, right? That out of a trauma can come a situation where our life is even better. But it, it is true because I'm living it. I've experienced it. And it's not in spite of the trauma, but because of the trauma, which I think is fascinating because... As I said, that's what I've experienced, all the work that I've done on myself and how committed I've been to my own recovery has created this growth and change in my life. It opened up my world. So I just want you to open up your mind to this possibility. And again, like I'm not dismissing the horrors of what you've gone through or the trauma just opening up to the fact that there is hope. And not only can your life be as good as it was before, but it could be even better. So I just want you to open your mind to that if you're feeling resistant to it as you're listening to this. The possibility that through the trauma and suffering you've experienced in your life, you can create things that never would have happened otherwise. Like, I would have been working in the corporate world for the rest of my life. I would have never got the opportunity to be a life coach and work with people and help them. I always wanted to help people. I would have never had this opportunity to do that if I hadn't experienced my daughter's addiction. I mean, personally, <laughs> I'd rather learn from pleasure, pleasurable experiences than painful ones, but since this is the journey that I'm on and it includes the trauma of a child's addiction, then I'm going to grow from that. So as you're listening to these episodes of my podcast, open up to the growth that you can experience as well, or give yourself credit for the growth you've already experienced. If you're a listener who's worked with me before, then you know I always point out your wins and growth, and I hope you're still doing that for yourself. This is a reminder to do that. But if you're a listener who's never worked with me, you should use the link in the show notes to sign up for a call because it's one thing to listen to this podcast every week. I mean, you'll experience changes from just doing that, but... Working with me one-on-one -on -one will help you take this work to so much deeper of a level and really get to experience putting the concepts I share with you to work in your life so that when we finish working together, it's just natural for you to do things that way. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that you have an amazing rest of the week and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want to learn more about my work, go to heatherrosscoaching.com. If you want to help other parents who are struggling with a child's addiction, you can do it two different ways. First, you can share the podcast with them directly, or you can share it on your social media. Second, you can leave a review. Talk to you next week.